modifying a 5 inch gauge Great Western Railway 14XX steam locomotive. This is part 17. The piping of the live steam injectors begins. To allow me to pipe the injectors, I need the engine on its side, so it's a good idea to empty the water out of the side tanks. I could use the hand pump, but why not use some automation and get the engine to pump its own water out of the side tanks. So here it is on the rolling road with a piece of silicone rubber tubing attached to the copper pipe from the bypass valve. The bypass valve is fully open and just by running the engine, which is always a nice thing to do, all of the water is pumped out of the side tanks back into the plastic bottle from whence it came. And as you can clearly hear from this clip, the engine's running beautifully. It's very smooth, it's making all the right noises. And it's not far from completion and the steam test. But first of all, I would like to pipe the injectors. Whenever I put a steam locomotive on its side on the bench, I always put some bubble wrap down on the bench. This bubble wrap, the plastic stuff that's full of air, prevents the side of the locomotive nearest the bench from being scratched. And the job begins. You can see here why I didn't permanently fix the handles into the water valves. These water valves are going to be bolted to the foot plate. And in this clip, I'm removing the brass dome head machine screw which is a small brass bolt that secures the handle to the rotating part of the water valve. I think while the engine's on its side, I'll take the opportunity to do a pan shot. Here's the ash pan. This is the centre crank axle. Here's the valve gear. Then you can see the cross heads and the two valve spindles that go into the steam chest to operate the valves. One of the first jobs I had to do was make some room for a copper pipe to be fitted to the clack valve on the boiler. First of all, I carefully used a round file and finished off the job using the small drum sander fitted into my small flexible drive mini drill. It's always important when doing jobs like this to sit and think about it first. For instance, where am I going to fit the injector? It's quite neat under here, it's out of the way, but then you have to think that if there was a small fireman stood on the footplate of this model, he wouldn't be able to see the overflow of the injector. So I'm going to put it here, which is approximately where the full-size version has the injector. It's most important to be able to see the overflow, because if the overflow is running, then the injector is not injecting water into the boiler. And even on this small 5-inch gauge locomotive, the driver sat behind the engine will be able to see whether the overflow is running or not. The piping for this injector is going to be quite tight. On this, which is the left-hand side of the engine, there's also a dummy pipe, which is getting in the way a little bit. But with a bit of careful juggling, it's possible to fit the injector steam pipe around this pipe, and it looks OK. Because of the complexity of the path from the steam turret all the way down to the injector at the back, particularly because it also, as I just mentioned, goes around a dummy pipe, I've done it this way. So I'm going to make each of the injector steam pipes in two halves, with a double-ended coupling union fitted in between the two pipes. In the video, I'm showing the completion of just one side of the piping, but I made them in pairs. I made one for each side. So once I have all the piping, it's just a simple assembly job to put it all together. Here's the left-hand side one, and here's the right-hand side one. And the piping's not absolutely identical, but it's near enough for rock and roll. The next part of the job is to make the water feed pipe. And you will notice that this piece of pipe already has a union cone silver soldered onto the end. That's because I had this piece of pipe left over from the previous installation. So mark the length of the pipe, cut it on the bandsaw and silver solder the unions on the end of it. And here it is fitted to the injector. These live steam injectors are not held by anything other than the piping. And the main support pipe is the short pipe that goes to the water valve. It's fairly important sometimes to be able to remove these injectors when the engine is in steam. If you're not getting any boiler feed and the other injector packs up, then you have a problem. That's why I use an adjustable spanner. Water feed problems on a steam locomotive and even a full-size locomotive are quite serious. It's no good rummaging about in your box of spanners for a suitable size spanner to allow the removal of a defective injector as the water in the water gauge is disappearing below the bottom nut. So that explains why I use an adjustable spanner. It doesn't have to be a barco adjustable spanner, but I like those, they're very good. 
For both jobs in my workshop and jobs at the steam workshop, I often use the Barco adjustable spanner. Occasionally, if I have one to hand, I will use a normal spanner, but the Barcos are very good. In this clip, I'm making a copy of the first pipe with a second piece of pipe. And when the steam unions are silver soldered to them, they look like this. These steam union fittings that fit at the injector side of the pipe, you will notice, are not coned. They are flat. And the reason why the injector ends of the unions are flat is to allow quick release of the injector without having to bend the piping. Here's a gratuitous clip of my Barco spanner in action, and I'm fitting the blowdown pipe to the blowdown valve of the water gauge. In fact, it's such a good spanner, I'll freeze frame this part. And you can clearly see the word Barco on the spanner B A H C O. Hmm, that sounds like a good name for a song. I'm splitting this job into two halves because it's more complex than it first seems. I have to make a double clack adapter that fits under the foot plate. And I haven't got any 5 16s by 32 threads per inch clacks. So as soon as I finish this voiceover, I'm going up to Blackgate's Engineering to buy some. Here's a shot of all the piping about to go into the acid bath. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.